So in my couple of my other videos, when I've been doing my drainage and I've been forming the excavation for the trench, and then you've got your pipe bedding. So you want the top level of the pipe bedding, what your drain sits on. It's important that you get them gradients right because you want it all to be on a gradient but smooth. You don't want it up and down and all over the place because everything ends up a right mess. And one thing or another. So um, if you've got a rotating laser, you can set that to a gradient, which is brilliant because it's a one man job. You know, you can just work your way up the gradient once you've got it set. Or oh, this works better when you're doing the drain. You know, some people, they'll work out the length on a spirit level. And if it's six mil every meter, they'll put a packer under one. They'll put a six mil packer one meter up a spirit level. So then when you put the packer, so when you sit the spirit level with the packet at the lowest side on the pipe, it should read level. <clears throat> but that's good for being on the pipe, but it doesn't necessarily work as good for the excavation or doing your pipe bedding. So boning rods are fantastic because they're free. Well, no, they're not free. They only cost you a couple of quid in wood. And once you've got them, you know, if you look after them, you've got them. You can do it, use burning rods with one man, but it's not so easy. You're better off with two, but I'll show you that and I'll explain why. I'll explain, try and show you what they're for. So let me get some tools out and then we'll get them made. So these are what I'm going to use to make them. Hammer, nails. Pencil, tape measure, saw, and a square. You don't need hammer and nails. If you've got a driver drill and some screws, that's fine too. So first thing you want, you want three pieces of wood, something like two by two, or you can use tile battens. Four by two is a bit numb. So I'd say two by two or tile battens, and they want to be about this high, because that works for me. I find anything this high not so comfortable to use because what you're going to do, you're going to bend down and sight down with your eye across the top of the wood or near the top and if you've got the bottom of this in a trench, the top of this can be down here. So you're trying to bend down like this. And it's not so comfortable, it's not so good. So something this high, this is height of me, I find really good because I'm sighting through at eye level, which is comfortable because I'm stuck straight. And if I drop this in an excavation, you know, it's easy just to bend down to that height, subject to the depth of your excavation. If your excavation was a metre deep, I'd obviously make these a lot longer. So you want your three pieces of timber, and they all want to be the same length. So my eye height, I'm going to set these so they're comfortable, is about there, mark it with my thumb. So I'm just going to put a pencil mark on that piece of timber and then I'm going to measure up from the bottom and see what it is. So that's 58 and a half, I'm going to call it 58. I'm going to put a mark. So I want that one. Square it across. <laughs> so 
So I've got a pencil mark there at 58 inches and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other two pieces of timber. Right, so I've got my three pieces of wood, 58 with a pencil mark on at 58 inches. I now need three pieces of wood, you know, somewhere around a foot, two foot long. So I've got my three pieces of wood there. And two things are important. That these pieces of wood, what you're gonna nail on a square off that pencil mark, because you're gonna make like a letter T. It's important it's square. And it's important that they are all the same height from the floor. If you get that wrong, you're born in wads. They'll work, but your excavation will be wrong. So let's get them nailed on and set up. Right then, so there's my three boning rods. It's like a cowboy's graveyard. Now what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to prop them. And it's difficult to use boning rods on your own, unless you... Well, I'll show you how to do it on your own, but it's not as good. Ideally, I'd have somebody else here holding two of the props. But I'll um, get it set up and try and explain why. Right then, so this is how boning rods work. And they'll work on the flat or on a gradient going up and down. What's important is that you have the highest or the furthest point set at the correct level of what you want. And you have the starting point set at the correct level of what you want. So that can be digging the bottom of the trench, it can be the top of your pipe bedding. Um, it, it could be for anything where you need a straight, constant dig on the level or on the gradient. So here's the three, look, I've had to prop them. One, two, three. And your middle one is known as the traveller. So that is the end point there. And I've got that set at the finished level of what I want. And I've propped that so that's fixed. Now if there was two of us, I would hold the first one and it would be me who is deciding how much ground needs to come out in the middle. The man who holds that makes a decision. And this is your traveller. And another man would hold that and he would walk up and down between these two points. Holding that on the ground. So the idea is you sight across these. So there, there might be a slight undulation in these precast beams because that's how they come. But I'll show how they work. So we know this one is at the right level. We know that one at the far end is at the right level. So if this one in the middle is at the right level, the tops of these should all line up. So when you sight down, it's difficult to show you my, my GoPro, but you can see that's not bad. 
This is why it's important you put these square to the vertical plate because if they're all on the piss you can't get a true reading you don't know where, you, where you're reading it from so as you can see they look pretty good so now I'll show you what happens out on site so I've put a piece of wood underneath that middle one and if I hold it at the side you can see that that middle horizontal piece does not line up between this one and the one at the far end so you know that it wants to go down let's see if I can show you from underneath can you see how it's a lot higher so you know that that piece of ground up that it stood on needs to go down so you know that bit needs to go down you then move your traveller maybe a foot away or a metre hold it on and you can see what the ground wants to do whether it wants to go up or down likewise if this traveller is low you know your ground needs building up or it needs more gravel or more material in at that point <laughs> another way you can do it if you're on your own but I don't like doing it this way is you prop that securely and you prop that one securely it's okay if you're doing a drive because you can make some feet for the bottom you know you could make a cross and put some feet but if you're doing it in a trench it's not so easy you need clamps and other bits of timber so let's say you've propped the both end ones you then wrap a line round here so the line's on the top and take it up there and wrap it round but the problem is you need it tight because otherwise you get all sag in it and it can pull your two ends over and then all you do is you work the top of this traveller to that line if it's under the line you know it needs to go up if it's higher than the line you know you need to dig more ground out another thing which you can do with your boning rods say if you was I don't know working your way along doing excavation for a drain and graveling up as you went along I'm not saying you would but you could so you could have two of these on you could have one at this height for the depth of your dig and then you could have another one here for your gravel bed but you could spray paint these red or any color or do something just to differentiate between your gravel and your depth of dig so you'd have another one on there like that so there you go quick brief explanation of boning rods i hope you enjoyed that <laughs> i hope it helps somebody out